Hi again, here we are at the Australian Army Tank Museum, um, about 120 kilometres north of Melbourne in uh, Pakapanyol, Victoria. This um, facility is the Australian Army's um, armoured school, so this is where we train our tankers, and we're taking a look at some of the vehicles in their museum collection um, from the World War II era. So this is their second example of the M4 Sherman. I already took you through um, the Sherman, which is undercover. This one's um, out in the open. And um, it's an interesting example because it represents uh, the different hull construction um, techniques, one of the different hull construction techniques you see in the uh, M4 series of vehicles. So the hull here is what's termed a, um, a composite hull. So if you take a look at where those light guards are and where the, uh, the traverse locking mechanism is, that's a cast um, hull which is there at the front. And if you look more rearward, you can see that the, the hull at the rear is actually made from uh, welded construction. So this is what was termed the composite hull part cast and, um, and par welded um, fabrication. This, um, this M4 has the uh, 75 millimeter um, M2, M3 um, dual purpose gun that could fire a good HE round and also a, uh, a good anti-tank round. That gun was replaced later in the war in the European theater of operations by a higher velocity 76 millimeter. This one, according to the, the, the plaque that's here at least, was um, manufactured in the Detroit uh, arsenal and um, it was used here by the Australian forces for, for trials um, after, the, um, after the war. So you can see here there's quite a bit of damage um, or, or evidence um, on the side of the hull of um, uh, what different uh, small arms have done to the armour. So if you're ever um, doing modelling and you're wondering what, what you know, armour should look like if it's being uh, impacted by, um, by our relatively small, um, small arms and solid shot, should be something like this. There's probably some rounds here from 7.7s and um, 303 Vickers and that sort of stuff, and maybe even a 12.7 or, or, or 50, um, 50 cal. So you can see here, right where this um, reinforcement plate is next to the uh, gunner's position, um, you can see the, uh, the welding that's gone on to join the, um, the composite part of the hull together. So you've got the cast part at the front here, the welded part at the front here, and this weld to join the two sections of, um, of hull uh, together, which continues up and over um, across the uh, tank. And you see here, it has the, uh, the large hatches, which were uh, you know, typical of, um, of some of the later war, uh, later war Shermans. Um, so it's a very interesting um, version of the Sherman. Um, it has the, uh, the original um, uh, vertical um, volume suspension um, with return rollers rather than, uh, rather than skids. And so um, uh, uh, bogies with, um, with two wheels, um, just uh, one wheel per axle, so you haven't got the um, E8 suspension on here, and as I mentioned, the vertical volume springs. Like all Shermans, you've got a rear-mounted engine and a front-mounted drive sprocket. According to the plate, this has got the, uh, the GM diesels, um, this, the, the twin I6 um, diesels that were mounted side-by-side, side, the so-called 6048 configuration. Um, so it was uh, later in the war than the vehicles that were employing the, um, the Continental uh, Aero engines. Um, so you can see here the rear of the uh, hull, the uh, forward-facing um, uh, intakes here into the um, into the uh, into the uh, uh, engine bay, um, and the uh, the uh, one of the engine access points behind those um, behind those double doors here. Here you can see also see a good example of the um, uh, of the tank uh, of the uh, track tensioning mechanism um, here at the uh, rear of the, uh, rear of the vehicle. This had the um, uh, the all metal um, tracks. With the uh, so-called uh, U um, uh, U shoe footprint in them, um, which gave uh, better traction um, in, uh, in in soft uh, soft surfaces. Um, one interesting thing um, I've always wondered about the Shermans is how their um, their drive sprockets had so many bolts and connections. I could never work out why you would make the um, the assembly process for um, a drive sprocket so complicated with so many bolts required and the like. Um, you know, we could all, you know, we could cast something in one piece and machine it down or forge it and make it strong. And um, it became clear to me um, just from being here and able to look at a physical example that it makes perfect sense. Because when the tanks um, are running forward, of course, the, uh, the sprocket's turning in this direction, which means that there's a tendency for the front of the teeth to wear against, to wear against the, uh, the, the track here as they try and drive forward. Of course, the tank does go in reverse, but the vast majority of time and the vast majority of load and wear is going to be in the forward configuration. By having a, uh, a, a sprocket which is bolted on in this manner, you can take the sprocket off and turn it around 180 degrees and bolt it back on. And then you're not just getting use of um, the front part 
of the sprocket teeth here, you're also getting use of the rear part of the sprocket teeth once you turned around 180 degrees. So if you had dam excessive damage or excessive wear in the field, you could by very easily removing, you know, maybe, uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe removing 16 bolts, um, turn that um, uh, tooth part of the sprocket around and get um, extra wear out. So interesting feature that I'd never picked up before when I've um, been looking at uh, Shermans and seeing them in, uh, in in action. So you have the uh, the cast turret with the uh, the, uh, the commander's cupola there and the uh, the basket for the uh, for the radio gear in the um, in the back of the uh, in the back of the turret there. I'll try and get a shot of the hull. And I'll come around to the um, to the left of the vehicle here past the stump <laughs> and there you can see um, more um, more impact damage from uh, from small arms testing that was done on the uh, the armor of the Sherman and again another um, uh, piece of applique armor here to uh, protect the driver's position um, from uh, uh, from uh, uh, shell bursts so another great example of the uh, uh, M4 medium here at the Australian Army uh, Tank Museum in Pakapanyal. Hope you enjoyed that video and uh, I highly recommend getting down here to take a look. Bye.